Well, here we are, guys. The next to the last shave of August, right? Yeah, how about that? Watch doesn't read 30 very often. Four brush, Smoke Owners Club, Taj Handle. And it looks this way because it's been soaking in water for just a, you know, several minutes. Piccolo Handle on the Fatip Special Edition. And this has the open comb head in it. The Nasset Blade. And the Vetiver Soap from Martin de Condre, as we've seen all month. The, it's just an aluminum cap on this soap. And it's strange because this, it's got to be a polycarbonate or, you know, plastic container here. I don't think it's glass. It's very, very, very sturdy. And then to put this, you can see I've just done a little bit of traveling with it and it's just getting bent up a little bit. Uh, why, why do that, you know? One of these things is not like the other. This is the 332nd use of the Nasset blade. So I guess 333 will be where we stop with austere August. Uh, when it's done with the Nasset, we're just a month away from having a whole year of shaves on one blade. I don't think I'm going to continue on with the Nasset immediately, but I do plan on returning back to it kind of quickly. Uh, I'll, I'll play around with some other blades. We're we're still going to we're going to step back to what we did in July with the blades that we voted on. I had about 50 or 60 of you viewers out there who wanted to jump online and take the poll and uh, register your votes for which blades to use and so I'm going to step back to that and see which ones are next in line and, uh, and that's the next in September we'll start using those blades with a an assortment of different different razors all right let's take a look at our blade here but before we do the post shave item of this month has been sub commander integrity unscented and menthol free. It did a great job this this month. I don't really need a lot of conditioning because I have oily skin, but it it helped me out sometimes when I did need it. Maybe I uh, there was I know there was a couple times where I was a little careless, and I, I needed some extra help with the balm, and it did a great job. So here's the nasset, and there's my little dots up there. I used to hold it up to close to the camera, but this particular phone doesn't really focus very well on this, the selfie camera part. If I was reversing the camera uh, to use the actual forward-facing camera, I think it would be fine. But now I'm just checking the alignment. Looks good. Okay. I'm going to continue on with a 10-second load. That seems to be the load that's my preference. I'm a bowl latherer, and that even works pretty well for face lathering, too. I'm a bowl lather, and that lets me keep all of the suds and lather that I make in a bowl. I don't have to worry about it when it gets extra wet. It's not going to fall down on my shirt or into the sink like it sometimes does when you mix it up on your face. I like that a lot, which is one of the main reasons why I'm a bowl latherer. So the blade is ready to go, pardon me, and I'm going to get my face wet and then we'll load up the brush. Okay, so the brush, it's a bore brush, and for those of you who are new, bore brushes do need to be soaked beforehand. At least 99% of the guys out there like to do that. Now whether you leave a bunch of water in yours is up to you, it's optional. I like to shake most of mine out. But you can also shortcut your lather a little bit because I'm going to have to add, usually add about two teaspoons back in. And so feel free to try, leave some water in your brush and load up and that might shortcut you, get you to a nice lather quicker. Matter of fact, I, I probably advise that for most people. The reason I don't do it is because I like for my videos to be 
lessons in themselves. And so pretty much any time a person looks at one of my videos, I want, I want it to be easy for them to try to duplicate the lathering experience. And if they have, to, if they have a, a different kind of brush than this, then shaking out two shakes after being fully wet, if the brush is different, then that's going to be different too. By emptying out most of the water, then I can measure how much I add back in, tell people that at the end of the shave, and then they can duplicate that part of it. And so that's why I, I put, take water out of the brush, but then end up adding it back in, because then we can measure what goes back in. And I feel like that's a little bit more reproducible for people who are having lathering problems. All right. Ten swirls. One. Ten. <laughs> I may just laugh every time I do that because it's just so little. It seems like, it seems like it's so little. Another razor that I will be using in the next few weeks, I got the Rocknell, Rocknell, I don't really know how to pronounce it, and it is one that I was able to use a few times before August started, and so I'll definitely be bringing that in again, putting more shaves on that. I'll be using some fine accoutrement soap, it's just one of my favorite bases. I have several of their soaps, most of their collection I do have in terms of the different scents that they offer. And I just love their performance and price and it's a hard puck so it's going to last forever. I think they did maybe start to have some creams now, but I'm going to pretend those don't exist. Surely I've never had a cream that's better than a hard soap version of it. Uh, but they might be good for travel or something like that. So I put one teaspoon of water in. And already, we're looking good. Yesterday, I ended up putting about one and three quarters teaspoons in the lather. And I, by the end of the shave, I wish that I had backed off a little bit. So maybe I'll try today sticking with just one and a half teaspoons. This is not... In my experience, not really a lather that likes to be pushed heavy with water. I do like the scent of the fougere of this soap, the scent, um, the fougere scent that they have. This is the vetiver, of course, and I'm a big vetiver fan in most cases. And I do like this one a lot if I had it as a part of a rotation. I, it's not something I look forward to using if I've used it the previous few days. It does, I mean, it wouldn't be too bad uh, if I was stuck somewhere and this is just the soap that I had. You know, you just, it's not, it's not offensive in that way, but it is one that I don't enjoy quite as much as others. Let's put it that way. And we can look, look at the textures there. We've got some smooth areas. We've got some peaks. See those little tiny waves and peaks right there? Those are indicators. As you look, you get together the wad of lather on your brush and look at the texture. And that's going to tell you a whole lot about it, about the amount of water that you have in the soap. How does the peak stand on its own when it's tall? That's not a super tall peak. However, he is not moving at all. And this is the kind of soap that usually likes 
maybe this kind of structure. Other soaps like Sterling and Barrister and Man and Holy Cow and Noble Otter and Declaration Grooming, I definitely take wetter than this for sure. And I get a creamy, wonderful lather pretty much every time. I got my face wet one more time. Now, in my computer program that I wrote, kind of a shave database, I wanted to add a, a field in there for weight, the weight of the soap. I had to put some thought into it. Because the soap is going to weigh different things before and after the shave. It if it hasn't been used in a while, I'm going to be imparting some water to it as well before I use it. So if I measured, if I weighed it after the shave, then it might have that water could potentially throw off the measurement. This lather looks good. Feels good on my face. The brush is feeling nice with it could add a little bit more water if I wanted to and I may just add just a couple of little bit of drops here I could weigh it I could weigh the soap after the shave I could weigh it before but then if I weighed it before then that the last shave of August I'm not going to have the final weight of the soap. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to shave with this same soap on September 1st. And then I'll be able to record the weight it was before. And so I will have the, the weight that I measured before August started. And then the weight after August is done. Then I'm going to set the soap aside just kind of let it dry out more because I do have a measurement of how it was kind of totally dry. And so we will be able to compare it kind of two different ways to try to get a good, a good weight. Try to be as accurate as possible, but there's definitely going to be some plus or minus, you know, because we are dealing with, even if I had a scale that measured in decimal places, tenths of a gram, hundredths of a gram, something like that, it wouldn't be all that accurate because of the water I'm adding each time. You know, I'm not, I'm not starting with an exact amount of water. You know, I'm shaking a bunch of water out of the brush until it seems about right. And that's, that's entering, uh, that's bringing in some inaccuracy there, but I don't really feel like we need to be that accurate. Okay. We're trying to do stuff that's just reasonable and to give us a guess, an idea about how long this soap will last. And so I believe we're definitely going to be able to accomplish that with our current level of precision. I went ahead and talked to you for just a second. There's an ulterior motive in that because I wanted to let the lather sit on my face for just a little bit longer. It really does help to make the shave slicker and smoother. A little bit of tugging, but not really very much at all. It's pretty comfortable. Kind of surprised it's this, this good. And let's put on that after a rinse. We will now put on the second pass. And remember, we did do the scrubbing on the first pass. A scrubbing motion like this 
really only necessary on the first pass. Now, if you like the feel of your brush, feel free to do it as much as you want. I mean, unless you've got a really scratchy brush, that could give you some irritation, right? But second and third pass, we just want to lay down that nice lather layer. Very good. Rinse. You know, with an older blade, after that first pass, I often feel a good bit of stubble. And that's normal, because it's just not going to cut as efficiently as it used to. But after the second pass, face feels nice and smooth. I'm sure at some point, that's going to change, and maybe that'll be an indicator that the blade is about to retire, is when I start to feel more stubble at the end of the second pass just a quick lay down of the lather it's nice and wet was chatting just now with HD shaves that's his name on YouTube real nice guy He was interested in bringing a, a modern, aggressive razor into his lineup. He tried a Wolfman that was kind of in the in the mid or you know higher gap, and it, it didn't fit him. You know, and that was the WR2, I believe, and that's got a really good grip on the blade. And to me, my 95 still gives me a little bit more blade feel than I might like, but it's right in that mid-range. I still get uh, some blade feel. Oh, actually, the, even the 85 gives me a little bit more blade feel than I might like, but that's as low as I've been able to find with the WR2. It's hard to get those in the milder gaps uh, because right now he's not offering custom orders, so you kind of have to take what you can get. Well, let's rinse. And so I was a little surprised that he didn't like the Wolfman as much. The, the one he was asking about was the Blackbird from Blackland. And I have a little bit of experience with that one. Not a lot because it was just so aggressive for me. And I pass that information along to him in case it might help him. I really, I, I could use it and I, I did cut myself occasionally, but not really, cutting wasn't really a problem. I just had an overall irritation on my face with my skin. I really felt the need for a good balm after using it. It just, I, and then I kind of dreaded, I think I actually dreaded going to the third pass and Sometimes I might just stop at two passes. And it just goes to show you how different people's skin is because there are guys out there, when I did my research about the Blackbird, that said it gave them such an amazing shave and it was smooth. They talked about how smooth it was. That wasn't my experience at all. People are just different. And so I did have to say, sell mine quite a, a while back. Now, it just occurred to me that maybe I, I need to send a follow-up message to him because, you know, Blackland bought Tradere or Tradere. He, he explains, if you go to Blackland Razors and you go to the Tradere site, he lists the pronunciation. And I think he has it as three, a three-syllable word, but I, I'm sure I'm not remembering it correctly. Oh, huh. 
I'll leather, I meant to just lather up my, my neck, but I, I went ahead and did my whole face. I just wanted to redo this area right here. And now I've done it. So that's, that's kind of funny. I did not need to do my cheeks again. But you see, I have a light touch. And I have a razor that's not all that aggressive. And it's not going to give me any kind of irritation or razor burn. All right, full rinse. You know, the dart might be a good recommendation for him. I found it right on the edge of my own aggression preferences. It's still a, a very uh, pretty piece. Very well machined. That sort of thing. Blackbird uh, I has a special meaning for me. I was in the Air Force. Wasn't involved with the Blackboard program at all, but it was also, when I was a dreamy young boy, the Blackbird was a poster that was on a lot of our walls um, because it was a really cool, uh, amazing plane. And it was when I was, it came around when I was a kid and stuff. So it, it, it's a little bit nostalgic for me. Uh, so I enjoyed having that razor and it does, it does kind of have similar looks. Uh, some parts of it are definitely reminiscent of the shape of the Blackbird. But unfortunately, I was so sad that it just, just didn't work with me and my skin. All right, well, there we go. Irritation-free shave, nice close one as well. I'm really happy with the result there. And uh, there we go. I am working up. I'm trying to find... Here at my new place, I'm trying to round up all my Gillette vintage razors that I can because I want to give you guys a tour of the vintage Gillettes um, to uh, just kind of put it out there as a little bit of a documentation. So uh, it could be a reference where you can just see a bunch of different types in one video. And, uh, and so I'm going to be working. That's upcoming. Maybe I can get that out in September. Uh, all right. Very good, time to clean up. And here is the Taj Smoke Owners Club. And it's Bloom, I am documenting that as well. I think with this guy, when we hit September and we no longer have to use him every day, I think I'm going to uh, use him once a week, at least to really try to put some uses on him, keep him uh, growing, keep those tips splitting, and try to move uh, quickly toward a, a nice break in with just tons of tips split to really maximize the softness. And then I can use him as a reference to, uh, to know how the boars uh, behave and feel once they get a lot of uses in them. I did put a little bit more water in. Looks like I gathered up more soap than I did yesterday by just a tiny bit, and so I needed a little bit more water. So the 1.5 teaspoon, uh, 1.75 teaspoons of water today was the perfect mix, whereas yesterday it was just a hair too wet. And that is why I, some people interpret me using the syringe as me only wanting to use or wanting to bring into the shave a certain amount of water, and that's the opposite. I just use it to be able to apply a small or large amount of water easily, and it does that really well. It's easy to apply a small amount of water to your brush by the fingertip method, but often, as you see, I'm putting a teaspoon in there or a half a teaspoon, and that takes forever when you're doing a finger drip type method. So that's the main reason I use the syringe, and then it just so happens that because it's a measured device that at the end of the shave, I can then tell you how many teaspoons of water I use because again my lathers and my technique is designed to help folks with lathering troubles and so when they know that I used that I added that I shook my brush out to a certain level and then I ended up adding three teaspoons one teaspoon whatever it took then that helps to give them an objective frame of reference to try to duplicate the lather and as always I'm not saying you always have to measure but if you're having trouble, maybe it's good to measure for a little while. And until you get the, the feel of it, then ditch the syringe and do whatever you want. And just to underscore with a little bit of, uh, with a few numbers, how things just vary. 
Yesterday, I ended up using the exact same stats as today. Yesterday was 10 swirls, one and three quarters teaspoons of water, same as today. But yesterday, I ended up with only four passes of lather, and today I ended up with five. Just There's just going to be some variation like that. And so I usually, when I find that optimum range, I usually will make the optimum be a little bit more than I often need so that if there's a variation to it, I know I'm always covered. All right. Well, I think we're done. Face feels great. And remember on the last day of the, sh last day of the month, which is going to be the next shave, I'm not going to be able to, to provide the immediate data. I'm going to have to wait till September 1st when I weigh it right before that shave. And then I'll know um, the start and end weights and that, so we're going to have two start and end weights we're going to have the one the uh the wet weight the the weight uh, no you know what since i didn't use mdc on the last day of july i don't actually have the wet weight before the august first shave and so i will only have 30 days of wet weight i believe uh, so eh, we'll do what we can. And so the data I'm going to be able to bring to you will be on the shave for September 1st. Uh, there will also be a lag time because uh, when with the lather games as well as this month, I change my broadcast schedule a little bit so that you're getting the shave the kind of the same day it was done or it was done the night before and you're going to be seeing it sometime that next day. And I usually actually like to go by one day delay uh, to give me enough time to do the write-up. And if my life gets busy, I still have enough time to fit the write-up in sometime, you know, that, uh, you know, for you. And, uh, and so then there'll probably be, I don't think I'll do it on uh, September 1st because I'll just keep going with MDC. But maybe between the September 1st and the 2nd, There'll be a day where I won't put out a daily video because I'll let that delay kick in, you know. So expect that. Uh, it just puts it takes a little bit of the pressure off uh, for me um, getting the videos out and that sort of thing if I if I put it on a little bit of a delayed schedule. All right. Well, stuff's put away and uh, looking forward to to new stuff. I'm going to go back and look at all my incoming shaving products and see which one. Oh, you know what? Uh, in one of the products that I had mailed to me, I got some really cool samples, um, and it was excellent. It's, it's like the guy picked, he picked three different little sample tubs and every single one of them were ones that I was really interested in trying. A couple from uh, Southern Witchcrafts, Anthropophagy, I believe was one of them. Uh, and then an, another one and they would jo just all hit me per, oh, uh, one from, Zingari Man, I believe the healers, perhaps. Uh, so, and I definitely wanted to try that one. So, uh, really cool. Um, so, those are another couple of samples I'll be able to bring uh, to the table in September. Looking forward to that. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. And um, uh, Peter, it's been a pleasure interacting with you over the uh, comments lately. Alan, you as well, and Adriana, uh, your little daughter. Uh, you know, hey, I hope you you guys are doing really well. Sometimes they. Uh, tune in together and play and she plays around with his uh, shaving stuff and then likes to smell his uh, his shaving soaps and all that so uh, to you and yours uh, everybody be safe take care of yourselves in this whole you know covid thing and uh, blessings and prayers to you all uh, this is sugar daddy shaves you take care and we'll see you next time